Boo shakalaka. What's going on, everybody? Randall here from Crypto Love. And I am joined today by Dallas Rushing, the founder of Karma. What's going on, Dallas? What's up, man? Glad to be here. Thank you for having us. Oh, my goodness. It's a pleasure. I just found out you're down in beautiful Medellin, Colombia, having an awesome <laughs> time. Yeah, right next, to, right next to David Hay, who's a, you know. Yes. <laughs> for a long, the funny thing, for a long time, he thought I was Australian. <laughs> <laughs> Why did he think that? I have no idea. I never say mate. I don't say, like, let's put another shrimp on the ball bay. I have no idea. <laughs> You don't drink Fosters or... Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I don't know. But uh, finally met him in person and he found out I wasn't Australian. So <laughs> today we're talking about Karma, which is a very interesting new um, platform that's coming out on EOS. Now, before we get into Karma, let's find out a little bit about you real quickly. How did you get into blockchain, Karma, all that stuff? Oh, man. Um, I guess I'll go with the blockchain Even question YouTuber, first. So YouTuber as well. Yes. 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 Uh-huh. Ch- j- trying to trying to be like you, man. So, uh, <laughs> so, um, so, so blockchain in general, man, I mean, I've been um, just, you know, someone who's, you know, invested and just been interested with the whole space for uh, a little thing, a little over two years or something like that now. Uh, just to, I can't can't think of the start date, but but yeah, I mean, just generally fascinated with it. Um, you know, I used to trade like forex and stuff like that before, and so just been been just generally interested in like you know money markets and all these different things. And you know, obviously, as you know, right with blockchain, it, it's not just money. There's you know everything it just it goes infinitely deep. And once you sort of learn about this stuff, it's sort of a sort of a virus, and that's all you think about. So mm-hmm. <laughs> probably similar path like a lot of people. Um, and, and yeah, just j- just was a fan and someone interested. Um, I started the YouTube channel um, about five months ago now, I think. Uh, just, you know, my thinking with it then was, you know, if I can, if I can start a channel when, when people are at an all-time high for freaking out because the markets had just dropped a little bit, then, you know, if it can get any sort of traction, then I think the channel will be fine once, uh, once the markets rebound. So, so that's been fun, you know, and I think it's been a, a good thing, I think, just to focus on, on the learning aspect of things and, and not worry about the price of these things. Um, and, and karma, uh, you know, the, the whole thing with karma, man, I mean, uh, like I said, myself and, and, and Matt, the, uh, the co-founder, we, you know, we both live down here in Medellin and, uh, you know, we just ha- ha- since we, since we moved in and got a place, you know, we always, you know, at night would sort of chat about blockchain and where this stuff's going and, you know, different ideas. Um, and the other, and this was maybe like six weeks ago, we were sitting here and I was like, all right, what about this? And I sort of just laid out, you know, sort of, sort of the, the, the bigger ideas of what karma is. Uh, and he was like, I love that idea. And he's like, hold on, check this out. So I went to the room, grabbed his computer, and he sort of sketched out a very similar idea like four or five years ago, but it wasn't really possible uh, to, to implement a lot of the things then. And so we were like, wow, okay, it must be meant to be. Uh, then just, just, just went crazy at it, trying to make all the, all the necessary things to make the project real, you know? Very cool. So it sounds like it, it, sounds like it was meant to be. So yeah. <laughs> tell us, what is karma? All right, so so Karma uh, is a decentralized app powered and being built by and on top of uh, EOSIO, right? And so what it really is, is a, like I said, an application that will be uh, designed to incentivize people to do good things in the world for other people or have beneficial human interactions with one another uh, or, or animals, technically, I guess if you, if you want to you help out some dogs or some cats as well. But, uh, and then, you know, and then you post those things and, you know, if people were to upvote you um, and like those things, you can receive, you know, you can receive karma, um, you know, for, for the upvotes, similar to Steemit. I think a lot of people sort of understand how, how Steemit works generally, but um, a lot of differences, I guess, in sort of the, 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 the finer details of how Steemit works and how karma will work. Um, but yeah, really, I really are thinking is, you know, if you, you know, incentive is better than no incentive. And I think if you reward good behavior, you get more of it, you know, whether it's, you know, you see, I think at all ages for, for adults and kids, I think that thing seems to be true. So we're thinking, you know, if we can sort of have a, a self running system that can incentivize people to do that, uh, and create sort of a fun community around the whole thing that, that, that it'll sort of, uh, maximize the amount of good that's done in the world person to person and, uh, you know, create a lot of opportunities for people who don't. Who maybe don't have it. Yeah, that's awesome because you're using blockchain to actually make the world a better place as opposed to just put like statues of cats on the blockchain. <laughs> you're doing something <laughs> to actually make a difference in the world. So that's pretty rad. Thanks, and, man. Yeah, and uh, I mean, it's cool to, uh, to incentivize people to do that stuff because, you know, the Dalai Lama, when I was reading over your paper, the Dalai Lama, he said that the most selfish thing you can do is be generous because 
when you do that, you feel really good for being generous. So now with karma, you're getting incentivized twice, once from just feeling yes. better, second through earning karma. And um, so also when I was thinking about it, it seemed like you mentioned somewhat like steam it where you get rewarded, upvoted, downvoted, things like that. But also mm -hmm. people on social media, they love to post what they're doing. So if they go and yeah. work a day at a shelter or whatever, they're posting it on there with like a soup ladle and whatever. <laughs> um, so yeah. is that, that's kind of somewhat of a mix of like what it's going to be? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, people will be able to, you know, post photos and videos. Um, I mean, I mean, if people, you know, check out the white paper, they can see that, you know, there's really going to be in, in terms of how the rewards will be broken down and allocated. There is an emphasis um, on, on wanting to people or wanting people to post videos. The reason why is we just think it's, it's easier to sort of validate whether those things, you know, most likely happened because like anything, you know, there may be some people trying to sort of game the system. Uh, and there's, there's obviously, you know, other things in place, which we can talk about to, to try and prevent that as much as possible. But um, I think the vast majority of people, yeah, will, you know, they're already doing things like that, sharing, you know, positive things on, you know, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, whatever it is. Uh, but the thing is, you know, I think with some of those platforms, you just, um, it's sort of a mix of everything, right? You sort of get your, you know, your daily politic news with, you know, someone with a soup ladle with puppies. And then, you know, it's sort of a whole mix of everything. And we're thinking, um, you know, really just sort of having a feel good app that, that can, you know, like you said, also reward people, uh, you know, with a tokenized incentive for doing good things, you know, it'd be a, it'd be a fun thing, right? I mean, um, there's very few things I think you can go check, whether it's news sources or apps where, you know, everything you're going to look at is going to give you a positive feeling. And I think that, uh, you know, in the spirit of, you know, crypto love and your, your t-shirt you're wearing as well too, I think more, more love with that, you know, that could be in the world. I think that's a better thing for people and, uh, you know, just ha having people be happy. You know what I mean? I think it's a good thing. Absolutely. Love. That's what it's all about. So talking about t-shirts, I mean, you got on the, <laughs> you got on the t-shirt with your logo. Yes. So, I mean, what is that? Where did it come from? Tell me about it, man. Um, okay. So the logo, uh, I kind of made it by accident to be honest with you. But, um, so I, you know, the, the website we've got, I, you know, I, I made the site and, um, I was really thinking, I mean, I had sort of different ideas, right? We were thinking, you know, like karma, right? I mean, the feeling of karma, you know, I think we sort of associate it with obviously green, right? I mean, green is just, you know, good feelings and life and growth and all these different things sort of mixed in one. Um, but then the logo, you know, it's sort of, uh, it, it looked a little different than this at first, which I, I think most people didn't see it then because we didn't really, we didn't put the site out there. But, um, you know, more so what we were thinking was, you know, you sort of got like the leaf here, right? Or the, uh, you know, the little, I guess, leaf or sprout, however you want to look at it. Um, and then behind that, you know, you sort of got, you know, these things that they could look like wings or could look like the thing sort of launching or it could be sort of a, a butterfly, which I guess would signify sort of life and rebirth and all these different things. So it's sort of a, a mesh of all that. Plus it kind of looks like a trophy, which is cool. And I think uh, there's going to be some things that will be, I hope in the MVP, if not in like sort of the second version where, you know, the more we'll kind of gamify it where the more karma people earn, you, you sort of earn um, like, you know, badges or rankings and stuff like that. And I think, you know, kind of, you know, kind of looking like a trophy, I think makes it funner for people as well too. So it's a uh, sort of a mesh of all that, you know what I mean? But uh, something I think just to stand out and look different than, you know, a lot of other logos in the, in, in the blockchain space and to be sort of unique and, and represent what we think, you know, karma probably could look like, you know? Yeah. It's a very, it's a very cool logo. So I want to find out. Oh, know, thanks. <laughs> yeah. We'll get you a shirt, man. We'll do it. We'll do a trade. All right. That, sound, that sounds fun. <laughs> um, so you're based on EOS. Why EOS? Um, well, a couple of reasons, right? I mean, I think, I think community is a big aspect. Um, you know, not, not saying that the EOS community is, is better or, or whatever than, than other communities per se, but, uh, you know, I just felt like from the beginning, right? I think a lot of people in the EOS community, they're very giving, um, and especially with this project, we've had so many people just willing to, to, to jump in and help out. And I think that's true for blockchain in general, but, uh, so for the community aspect, right? I think that's a big part of it. Um, but beyond that, really the, the performance side of it. So, you know, kind of going back to something like Steemit, um, I watched an interview with Dan Larimer and, you know, he was asked, you know, why wasn't Steemit on Ethereum or, you know, a number of different things. And it, and it really couldn't be, to be honest with you, because, um, you know, number one, uh, you know, for it to be sort of a social media app, right, you know, on Instagram, if you like my post, you want to be able to see that like, you know, right away in real time. And if you did it on Ethereum, you're, you're sort of waiting for however long a normal transaction takes because a, an upvote is, is still a transaction. So, you know, if you, if you saw my post on Karma and you liked it and it was on Ethereum, you'd be waiting, you know, one to, you know, 10 minutes to, to get feedback that, that like actually was recorded. And I think that's not good. And then also, um, you know, the fact that EOS is fee-less, you know what I mean? So uh, at least to the, to the, to the user, right? Obviously there's 
you know, small inflation. But, you know, I think, again, I think we both agree if, uh, you know, right amount of inflation is actually healthy for, for an ecosystem. So um, to be able to have a fee-less transaction, if, if we had the same thing built on Ethereum or, or really any other blockchain that, that's out there that you could start to sort of try and build a, a decentralized app on, I'd have to actually pay a fee to like your post. And we just think it's really steps backwards. I mean, how, how can we incentivize people to stop using, or not stop using, but also use Karma as opposed to Instagram or Facebook if you're like, it's sort of a hard pitch to go, hey, stop using that thing, which is a free, fun experience, and come use this where you have to pay to do everything. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think it provides both of those things for us. Uh, and, you know, and a number of other things longer term. I mean, I think, um, you know, we really want Karma to be a decentralized app in the fullest sense and also a DAC, you know, decentralized autonomous uh, corporation or community, however, you, whatever you want to fill the sea with. And, you know, longer term, what that means is that users can actually, uh, you know, have their own EOS in a sense staked for their own use. So it won't really be on us to be sort of a, a centralized, you know, group who sort of made it. And then we're sort of paying all the RAM, and all the bandwidth for people. It's sort of, you know, if you want to use it, it's all a cart, you know, you, you, you stake for your own use. And that, I think that's the longer vision for how all these dApps will run on EOS. And I think so but to answer your question, those are some of the, some of the major reasons why we chose it. Cool. And you mentioned community a number of times there. Um, now you're having an airdrop where basically Karma tokens will be airdropped to the community. So you'll be starting with a community to begin with, correct? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and, and uh, I think uh, par- partly, I think somewhere there in your question, I think is that, uh, you know, maybe sort of why an airdrop um, as, yeah, opposed as opposed to, to an ICO. Yeah. 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 So, so I think um, a couple of reasons. One, I mean, I think an ICO is just sort of a riskier venture, right? I think for, for all parties involved. So from the, you know, from the people sort of launching um, the, the community and the ecosystem, I think it's riskier because, you know, there's so much uncertainty with ICOs, right? I mean, all, all these things are written sort of in gray areas and everyone's sort of like, are we, are we okay? Are we not? And so that's sort of stressful. and That's something we wanted to avoid. Um, and then for the user as well, right? I mean, you have people sort of, you know, that what the proposal is, and I love ICOs, don't get me wrong. I, I talk about them as I'm sure you do. Um, and I think they're a great way to raise funds, but it's sort of a, a proposition of, you know, hey, give us something that is liquid and has value now. Uh, in exchange for a token, which we just made up the price with no real way of saying why it's worth a penny or 10 cents or whatever, uh, to, to, to the, in the hopes that later someday it'll be out there and then be worth more than that. You know what I mean? And it's, it's sort of a, a kind of a, a riskier proposition, I think, for people contributing. That's one. Um, but more so the community side of what you said. I think um, even, even if you look at some of the best performing ICOs, you know, they maybe get, what, five, ten thousand 10,000 people contributing, and that would be like a real success. Whereas, you know, and, and really what does that mean? That means all those people are your token holders. So at best, let's say 10,000 people. Whereas, you know, post the airdrop, we'll have, you know, I think a hundred and the last time we, we counted, I think it's 160,000 different uh, EOS accounts will be, will be karma holders. So, you know, and I think in these things, right, I mean, network effects are so huge. And I think there's an, an obvious benefit to having, um, you know, way more people uh, being a token holder and being a community member than just, you know, 10,000 people and then trying to build up from there. It's a harder proposition, I think, for, for everybody involved. So, mm-hmm. Cool. So you've got your community built up. It's going to be an app that everyone can use. Where's the app in development? When's the plan for it coming out? Yeah. Um, so, so the app is, is currently being developed for both iOS and Android. And uh, we're going to release some, some previews pretty soon. Uh, I mean, we, we have some now, but, but I want them to be, you know, I want them to really show people, I think, um, you know, be, be a lot closer to sort of the models that are on the site. Um, and, and all of our devs are super talented guys. And I mean, they, they really think that, you know, I mean, Q3, absolutely, I think we'll, we'll have an MVP, um, which would be, you know, July, August, September. But um, we're really shooting for the end of July or the first week or so of August to have an MVP out there. And it will have, you know, a lot of the really the core features, right? So you'll be able to post, you'll be able to upvote. Um, rewards can be allocated. There's, there's a, so many other features longer term we want to add, but we think it just doesn't make sense sort of delaying, you know, the, it being in people's hands and they can actually go and use it uh, to just sort of wait on some of those other features, which are less important, I'd say, than the, than the really core features that it needs to have to, to accomplish what Karma is trying to do. Okay, yeah. So everyone's looking forward to that. You also mentioned staking previously. That's pretty interesting. So yeah. Uh, so how does the staking work in this? So, so, um, so one side of it, right, what I think earlier what I said was um, longer term, so users, right, could be able to sort of stake, um, you know, EOS for, for how much bandwidth and all the different things that they're using. That won't be now, right, exactly right now. There's still a few things developing on EOS that will make that, you know, I think flawless and really usable for people. But uh, within Karma, there's a staking element as well. And uh, really what it is is so, so when you receive Karma, uh, the more you stake, 
you know, the more uh, weight that your upvotes have within within the platform, sort of like Steam it, right? The more, you know, Steam power, the more Steam uh, that you stake longer term, it's uh, it's beneficial for the whole network, right? Because a lot of that's being sort of taken out of circulation. You're, you're also sort of, uh, you know, casting a commitment towards, you know, I have, you know, I have confidence in this, uh, this token and this project long term. And for that, you know, it gives you the ability to have, you know, in a sense, sort of a, you know, a stronger weighted vote, a little bit more clout on the platform. And I think it just makes sense, right? I mean, I think the more karma someone earns, um, it's funner that, that you can sort of, uh, you can sort of bless people with an upvote that gives them a little bit more karma, uh, you know, in, in relation to, you know, you, you like in their post. So I think it'll be a fun thing all the way around for people. Very cool. So tell us a little bit about your team and your advisors. Yeah, yeah. So, so the team, um, you know, like I said, you've got myself, uh, you've got, you know, you know, Matthew, who's got a, a wide range of experience. He's, he's developed a lot of different softwares for a number of different things. So he's got a, an interesting background, um, not, not so, you know, deeply blockchain related, but I think a lot of things that will apply really well to the project. Um, then we've got Leo uh, Ribeiro, who made uh, the first dApp on EOS, actually. It's called Monster EOS. It's a game. Have you seen it? Uh-uh. Oh, it's really cool, man. Check it out. You basically, uh, you go on and you sort of hatch a monster and there's, everyone's looks unique and there's no two, no two monsters that look the same and you sort of have to keep doing things to, uh, to keep kind of like strengthening and building up your monster. It's kind of a fun little game. So he made the first dap, which is cool. Yeah. Um, and, uh, so, so we got Leo and he's a super talented guy. And then we've got, uh, DJ, we call him DJ cause him and I have the same first name and it just gets confusing. I so. noticed that you have two yeah. dances on your team. What are the chances? What are the chances, man? I've I've met only a few in my life, so it's pretty, I guess, fitting, right? <laughs> but uh, but so DJ has a a, a tremendous background uh, as an iOS developer. He's made some really cool stuff. He also uh, was and is working with EOS DAC and helping them on some of the uh, smart contracts and different things that they're doing. So he's a really talented guy. Uh, then we've got John, who's working on the Android side. You know, using some you know using React Native to make that, which is cool. Um, and he's, you know, very, very knowledgeable in smart contracts as well. So we've sort of got a lot of guys who kind of have hybrid skills, but they really have their focuses. Uh, then we have Corvin, who, um, you know, Corvin is a very talented guy. He's from Germany. Uh, he's, he's a full stack developer. He's working on the back end and also the web, the web version of it. So people could, will be able to access Karma on a, on a desktop or, you know, in, if you have an iPhone inside of Safari, in case there's ever, you know, uh, some reason that they can't access it on the app. It's good to sort of have, that, I think, the backup in place. Uh, and then we also have uh, we also have a guy named Randy who recently just joined us. Very, very, very talented guy. Uh, he's worked with Block One as well as a dev. So he's, uh, you know, we're really excited to have him on board. So that's fun. Um, as far as advisors, um, you know, we've got we've got some unofficial advisors, I guess, as well too. But the uh, the announced ones, we've got Nathan from Scatter. He uh, and for those who don't know, Scatter sort of like. Uh, MetaMask, but for EOS, and, and you can do some other things with it as well too. It's a re really, really interesting, safe way to you know sign transactions with your private keys without exposing them. Um, and then we've also got Michael Yates, who was really smart guy. He helped uh, launch EOS DAC, and he's a, a part of that community as well too. Um, and then some of the unofficial guys, um, you know, Luke Stokes, who who was a you know really uh, he and still is a key proponent in the ste the Steemit community. He was also on EOS DAC. Um, we have a guy named Kurt who uh, he's the founder of White Rabbit ICOs. He's made, you know, th they have a really cool site for that. And he, he's worked on um, things like Blockfolio and a lot of other really cool apps. And so we just so many people willing to help out, man. I mean, um, it's, it, I think the advisor list will continue to grow, but uh, that, that's, a, that's a fun thing. I think just trying to get, you know, smart people to, get to go to if all of us can't figure something out. So it helps out for sure. Yeah, and that's awesome because when you do good things, people are drawn to it naturally. So that's, you've got that working on your side, definitely. So, <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah, so um, what have you got coming up? And is there anything that I particularly missed that we went in going over stuff? Um, so, so the airdrop obviously is coming up. Uh, there's going to be some, some, some kind of unique details that we're going to release, uh, I think today or tomorrow about that, that we sort of wanted to wait uh, until, you know, kind of right before to tell people. So, so that's sort of a little... Uh, a little preview, I guess, of people to sort of uh, be on the outlook for, you know, either a medium article from us. And also I think I'll put a video on my channel. I think it's something that may, uh, 
you know, some people may not understand why we're doing it, but I think it's going to be for the better of, of the community overall. So I, I, I can't tell you yet, but it, uh, it'll be, uh, we're just sort of finalizing the, the, the number on how to do it. But uh, people be on the lookout for that. That'll be interesting. Um, like I said, the, the airdrop will be out. There is, so far, there's been four exchanges who've announced that they'll support Karma. There's uh, Big Dot One, uh, KKEX, BitBNS, and Chains. And there's, there's about four or five other ones that, that are also, I think, going to list it um, post airdrop. They just are, they don't have everything fully set up to support EOS tokens yet. So, um, so they, they can't, you know, announce it yet. So I think there'll be, I think, plenty of areas for people to, you know, go and acquire uh, Karma if they, if they weren't able to take part in this airdrop. There will be some future ones later on, which we'll announce. So anybody who, again, who missed out on this one, I think can take part in that. Um, and then really, I think longer term, right? I mean, uh, you know, we want to sort of establish, you know, some, some karma ambassadors, people who really can help out and sort of, uh, you know, sort of be like an unofficial street team and kind of get people, you know, downloading the app and using it and stuff like that. So there's a number of different things. Um, maybe, maybe some karma parties, who knows? <laughs> awesome. awesome. I'm always trying to tell people on my channel about ways that they can get involved in crypto. So if they wanted to be part of your street team or part of um, working with you, how would they go ahead contacting you? Yeah, so I think uh, I think Telegram is an amazing spot for us. Obviously, like I think a lot of crypto projects, um, to, if you just search Karma app in there, you'll find it. Our group now is I think it's like 1,100 members or so, growing pretty fast. Um, so that's a really great spot that you you know people will be able to reach uh, myself and you know everyone else who's on the team and who's an admin inside of there if they have ideas. We're super open to uh, ideas that people have that can improve and make karma better. I mean, this is a, you know, like I said, longer term, it'll be a, a DAC. And, and in the spirit of, you know, of all this stuff, we'd be sort of crazy if we didn't take good ideas and, and try and make them real for people uh, who have good ideas, right? I mean, there's only six, you know, seven of us right now. So there's no way we have all the best ideas for, for what this thing could be. Um, and then longer term, that's, you know, sort of the fun part of it being a DAC is, de you know, a dev who's really talented can can propose an edit that, that will make the app better. And if, and if people like it, it can just be, you know, forked into the code and then, and then it'll be there for people. So that's, uh, I think what makes all these things really fun. So long winded answer, but, uh, telegram is one good spot. Uh, our website's another really good spot. People can find our white paper, uh, the one pager, they can join the email list for updates, uh, that way they don't miss them. And so I think the website and the telegram are probably the two best spots. Awesome, Dallas. Well, definitely looking forward to it. I mean, it sounds like an awesome project. You're doing good things. You're changing the world to a better <laughs> place. <laughs> very cool. Well, thanks very much for joining me for this interview today. Man, thank you for having us, man. I know you were, uh, you know, obviously, you know, really quick to, to be able to, to, to sort of uh, you know, lend your time to have us on. So thank you for that. And I'd love to, you know, maybe have you on my channel and, and share, share you with people on there who don't know about crypto love yet. I, I don't imagine it's too many, but there'll probably be some, uh, some newbies on there who don't know about you. So Dude, that sounds fun. We could live stream together sometime. Yeah, let's do it. That'd be fun, man. All right. Awesome. <laughs> well, have a good one. Thanks for joining us. We'll catch you later. All right. Awesome. Thank you, man. Peace.